What if Africa built a canal to rival the Suez, one that could reshape global trade, shift power balances, and cut shipping times by days? Every day, over 50 ships pass through the Suez Canal, carrying billions in goods. But with delays, blockages, and congestion becoming more common, the world is desperate for an alternative. And now, one country in Africa has a bold idea, a brand new canal, cutting through the continent, offering a second gateway between the Red Sea and the Atlantic. It's called the Trans-Africa Canal, and if completed, it could become one of the most important infrastructure projects in modern history. Today, we're diving into what this project is, how it might work, who supports it, and what it could mean for the future of global trade. The Trans-Africa Canal, sometimes referred to as the Africa Canal or Congo Atlantic Corridor, is a proposed megaproject that would link the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean through Central Africa. The idea? To use the Congo River, one of the world's deepest and most powerful rivers, as the backbone of a navigable canal system, potentially connecting to the Great Lakes region and onward to East Africa's ports. This would allow ships to bypass the Suez Canal, eliminate maritime bottlenecks and shorten routes between South America, West Africa and Asia by thousands of kilometers. To understand the impact, let's look at how global shipping works today. Right now, a ship from China to West Africa goes all the way around the Cape of Good Hope or through the Suez Canal, both long and often congested paths. But with this new route, cargo could travel directly across Africa, saving five to ten days on some shipping routes. And in a world where time is money, that's a game changer. Just think of how e-commerce, supply chains and fuel efficiency could benefit. Plus, it would help open up landlocked African nations like Chad, Central African Republic or South Sudan to global markets. But building a canal through the heart of Africa, that's no small feat. The challenges are massive, dense rainforests, mountainous terrain, wildlife reserves and infrastructure gaps in some of the least developed parts of the world. Experts estimate that the project could cost upwards of 50 to 100 billion dollars, not just for the canal, but for roads, ports, power and security systems needed to make it viable. Still, modern engineering has pulled off miracles before. The Panama Canal, built over 100 years ago, was once called impossible. Today, it moves over 300 million tons of cargo every year. So, who's behind this idea? Several African nations, especially the Democratic Republic of Congo, have expressed interest. There's also speculation that China, as part of its Belt and Road Initiative, may fund parts of the project, seeing Africa as the next big frontier for infrastructure. Global logistics firms, mining companies and even oil exporters are watching closely. Why? Because a new African corridor could revolutionize how raw materials like copper, cobalt and rare earths get to market. What do you think? Could this canal become the next global trade superhighway or is it just another billion dollar dream? If you're fascinated by mega projects, geopolitics and how massive engineering can reshape the world, hit that subscribe button. We've got more videos just like this coming every week. The Trans-Africa Canal is more than a line on a map. It's a symbol of Africa's rising ambition, of shifting global trade power and of the possibilities that lie just beyond the horizon. It won't be easy. It won't be fast. But if it happens, it could unlock a whole new future, not just for Africa, but for the entire planet. Because the next big revolution in global trade might just start in the heart of Africa. Deep in the heart of Africa, where rivers carve through ancient forests and the horizon stretches wider than the eye can see, an idea is quietly reshaping the world's imagination. A canal cutting across an entire continent, a thread of water and ambition that could redefine how the planet connects. It's more than a line on a map, it's the rebirth of a continent's power. A promise that Africa is not just the world's supplier of resources, but the architect of its next revolution. Picture it, a colossal waterway linking the Atlantic to the Indian Ocean. Ships gliding through a corridor that unites coasts, nations and economies. The Trans-Africa Canal, a mega-project so vast that its impact would ripple across oceans, industries and generations. But to understand what it means, you have to look beyond engineering. This isn't just a feat of machinery or money. It's a declaration, a statement that the future of global trade no longer belongs solely to the West or the East, but to the very center of the world. 
For centuries, Africa's geography has been its paradox, rich beyond measure, yet restricted by distance and infrastructure. The Congo River, majestic and untamed, has always flowed with the potential of transformation. Now, engineers are envisioning it as the spine of a new global artery. Imagine cargo ships laden with goods from South America entering from the Atlantic and emerging days later into the Indian Ocean, a shortcut that rewrites maritime maps, saving billions in time and fuel. But standing between vision and reality is a landscape that refuses to yield easily. The dense equatorial forests of Central Africa whisper with life that has existed undisturbed for millennia. Mountains pierce the skyline, and rainfall turns soil into rivers of mud. Beneath the surface lies an ecosystem as fragile as it is fierce. Building through this terrain means not only confronting nature's raw power, but learning to work with it, carving progress without carving wounds. Modern technology offers hope, satellite mapping, autonomous construction vehicles, AI-based logistics, and eco-sensitive engineering have made the impossible seem achievable. Dams could double as power stations, locks as water regulators that maintain ecological balance. The canal's design would incorporate corridors for wildlife crossings and protected green zones, blending progress with preservation. The challenge is no longer just to build, it's to build wisely. The stakes could not be higher. For the first time, Africa holds the potential to create its own Silk Road, a trade route not dictated by others, but designed on its own terms. This canal could channel more than goods, it could carry opportunity. It could redefine the identity of nations long overlooked, transforming them into vital connectors of global commerce. From Kinshasa to Kisangani, from Brazzaville to the Great Lakes, entire regions could awaken to a new rhythm, one defined not by extraction, but by participation. Imagine, decades from now, a ship's horn echoing through the African highlands. Containers stacked high with electronics, minerals, and textiles glide past emerald forests. Distant towns that once depended on dirt roads now hum with ports, cranes, and digital networks. New cities rise along the water's edge, not as monuments to foreign investment, but as symbols of continental pride. The canal becomes more than infrastructure. It becomes a story of rebirth. For global trade, this would be nothing short of seismic. A route through Africa would redraw shipping maps entirely. Ports like Lagos, Pointe Noire, and Mombasa would become strategic hubs, linking Atlantic and Indian Ocean markets in ways once thought impossible. The balance of power in logistics, long held by choke points like the Suez and Panama canals, would finally shift. The heartbeat of commerce would no longer echo only through the Middle East or Central America, but through Africa itself. But every revolution brings resistance. Skeptics warn that such ambition might strain fragile governments, deepen debt, and risk ecological disaster. Supporters argue the opposite, that the canal could unite the continent economically, weaving together economies that have remained fragmented for centuries. The truth lies somewhere in between. Progress, if pursued blindly, can destroy. But progress guided by vision can transform. And perhaps that's the greatest lesson this project teaches, that the future must be engineered not only with machines, but with meaning. The Trans-Africa Canal is not just a question of water and walls, it's a question of will. It asks whether humanity has matured enough to create without consuming, to innovate without exploiting. The canal's success would depend as much on ethics as on engineering. Picture standing at one of its future locks, the sound of engines reverberates through the humid air. Water rises and falls with rhythmic precision. The smell of diesel mingles with the earthy scent of wet soil and distant rain. Towering cranes move containers like pieces of a puzzle. Nearby, solar panels shimmer in the heat, feeding energy into an invisible network. The sky glows with sunset, deep orange over the green canopy. And in that light, you can almost feel the pulse of a continent awakening. This canal could also become a bridge of diplomacy. Nations that once turned inward would be forced to collaborate to negotiate shared rules for trade, security, and environmental stewardship. The Trans-Africa Project could foster unity not through politics, but through purpose. Because when water connects, conflict retreats. When economies intertwine, peace finds room to grow. And in that sense, this canal could become more than a corridor for ships. It could be a path toward stability, Beyond economics, there's symbolism. The great canals of history, from Suez to Panama, were built under the flags of empires, 
driven by power and profit. The African Canal, if realized, would be different. It would stand as a monument to self-determination, to a continent long underestimated proving it can shape the future rather than react to it. It would tell a story that the world desperately needs to hear. That innovation is not owned by one hemisphere, and progress has many voices. But progress also comes with humility. The environmental cost of such a project cannot be ignored. The Congo Basin is the second largest rainforest on Earth, a carbon sink vital to the planet's health. Cutting through it demands care beyond technology. It demands conscience. Scientists are already proposing floating canal systems, elevated waterways, and bypasses designed to minimize deforestation. The future of trade, they argue, must coexist with the future of the Earth. As years turn to decades, the dream of the Trans-Africa Canal could evolve from blueprint to blueprint, reshaped by each generation's values. The first excavations might begin in one region, followed by test waterways, prototype locks, and smart shipping systems controlled by AI. What begins as a grand construction effort could grow into something greater, a model for sustainable global infrastructure. And one day, perhaps, as ships glide smoothly across Central Africa, carrying goods between oceans, the world will look back and realize what truly changed. It wasn't just trade routes or economies, it was perspective. For centuries, Africa was seen as a destination for resources. Now it becomes a source of direction. The canal doesn't just move water, it moves history. At night, the canal would glow like a silver vein beneath the stars. Lights trace its serpentine path through forest and desert alike. From space, it would appear as a luminous scar, but a healing one. Proof that humanity can still design connection instead of division. And somewhere along its length, a worker might stand at the water's edge, watching the current flow eastward, feeling the enormity of what has been accomplished. A dream turned tangible, a future flowing before their eyes. This is what the new African Canal represents courage, collaboration, and continuity. It reminds us that the world's next era of progress may not come from the largest economy or the tallest tower, but from the quiet persistence of a continent determined to rise. The Trans-Africa Canal is not only an engineering dream, it's a reflection of our collective evolution, a moment where ambition meets responsibility. And if it succeeds, it will rewrite the story of trade, not as a competition, but as a connection. Oceans linked not by conquest, but by cooperation. Continents no longer divided by distance, but bound by design. The canal's waters would carry not just cargo, but the current of possibility itself, flowing endlessly between what humanity was and what it dares to become. So when the first ship finally crosses that new passage, slicing through the heart of Africa under the glow of the rising sun, it won't just mark a triumph of engineering. It will mark the moment the world rediscovered balance between innovation and nature, ambition and humility, dream and reality. And from that day forward, every ripple across its surface will remind us of one simple truth. The most powerful currents in history are not made of water, but of vision.